Hi, I'm Daniel, and the second season of Total Drama Reboot has been released quite quickly after the first one. I expected more of a gap between the seasons, but both released in the same year, yeah. They were produced together, this focused on a rematch for the same cast. This plan made it so that earlier eliminating contestants could be created with more potential, and avoid more screen time with the whole cast. I liked the previous season as a good way of turning to the show after many years. It felt natural, and introduced the cast to good characters without any real bad spots. This second season released in chunks, but I wanted to wait until I was finished to review it, and then I became very on and off making videos for a couple months. But I still have a script written, so better yet than never. This can be more of an after the fact review to discuss this season with your very positive and negative reactions for it. I can definitely see where both are coming from, and want to throw in my discussion of this season and total drama as a whole, but only mild spoilers at first. When I get to the characters, then I'll get more spoilers central. This season has mostly the same style as before, with the same intro on the island. While I would like another actual world toy location, I don't mind the island. It's a good location to see character interact with and for more challenges. One thing I just want to say improved over the last season is most of the challenge concepts. For the most part, there's two rift from Squid Game in the first four episodes. I also felt too much of a team phase that characters go off do things individually instead of doing things as a team. Still, this gave more interesting ideas for what a challenge could be that feel creative. Some help show details about the cast, while others are just fun to watch. There's also a memory to occasion our first part of the challenge. The episodes still feel over a bit too quickly, but I don't know how to avoid that. This season is fueled in pacing and binding the characters. There's quite a couple of characters who are just there in the story, and these characters feel stuck to certain interactions. It feels like everyone aside from maybe Julia can only speak to two characters across the season. It felt like Nichelle couldn't even get one character. Even in a merge cast, it takes a while for them to feel connected. Episode 7 has them grouped up into different teams, but they're all the same characters they're interacting with. When at the final five, they have to discuss who to vote, and it felt weird them acknowledging each other's existence. Total Drama often has similar characters interacting with each other, and most make sense. Particularly with the interactions in the Skunkbus team, but it still shows Miss Potential with this cast. Also, the Ratface team is just a boring mess. Maybe it's like the only drama that ever comes from that team. I saw criticism of this season's teams being too similar to the previous season's teams, which I originally didn't think was that bad with 5 from one team and 3 from the other. However, considering the first two eliminations and some early eliminations last season, these teams are very similar. Once with the finite version of the teams before merge, there's only two characters need to switch to match our season's teams. But that is also because a yet out of 16 characters merge. This is too early, but we see why I want to break away from the teams. I have established some of the ways I find the season fewer while we get into two certain characters getting all the season's hate. However, this is easily the most fun the show has been since World Tour. I have gone back to watch certain scenes interacting so many times. This season is very funny, I just enjoy seeing these characters. Even with problems, I'm happy with this cast. Next, I'll go over them in mostly order, but first, Chris. I have got used to his new voice, but I didn't find his writing as funny this time. Chris and Chef were great in season 1 the reboot, but he just kind of went to the back on as just their host. I don't come to the show for Chris, but I wish he had more funny moments. Also, I like some of the cameos and seeing Owen back. Anyway, this Yamnation order is mostly fine. I think the early Yamnator periods make sense, but this doesn't give time to separate most of the pairs, aside from the one that didn't need separating. This season also felt very weird in terms of not having a simple main character. It's felt very unpredictable and unpredictable. There was your moments that gave away who was the animated 5 minutes into an episode. You can tell when one character gets a suspicious amount of screen time. It becomes yes predictable near the end of the season when two certain characters get more focus than the animated contestant. Which is kind of both a pro and a con. Enough of Bailey speaking, now to go over every character. So, Scary Girl being eliminated first is fine. She is funny, but only by having limited appearances and being in a normal cast. The way she brings up stalking the cast were a bit forced, but I don't mind that much the way they are eliminated. As for the other character who never merged, Nichelle. She was set up to make it far, then did nothing of four episodes. I don't think she's a bad character and found no elimination fitting, but she is one of the weakest. She barely interacts with anyone else, and the way her arc was written makes her what she can do in a future season without feeling too repetitive. Is she going to try and redeem herself a second time? She already missed that chance. Other early eliminations were Chase, who I was fine with, and Emma. I'm unsure about the character in general, but I don't mind her early exit. The episode context makes sense for her to vote out. I don't think it's too out of character. 
Granted, despite making a fifth yacht season, she seems to only have interacted with Chase Bowie on Freya. This season also had Ripper and Axel coming a couple, which I'm just going to say I yiked. I don't think it's rushed, just the episodes 2 to 4 or these together sort of feels it. I think they were an enjoyable part of the season, but it's weird how Ripper felt like a main character of the first couple of episodes. Also, Axel's okay, but definitely one of the least established characters. There's C, and I like how far he made it because he was constantly funny. I enjoyed them more this season, but I'm more appreciative of comic relief characters. It gets a bit overboard with over half of this cast for like comic relief characters, but C is most likely the best out of them. There's also Damon, whose win of arc fell to up, but it didn't happen. Based on the early season, it seemed Kiri wouldn't win. Damon still enjoyed one fun, I liked the moon tied up your yarn, but I do also see how they skipped over an arc for him. The only development he had aside from the immune title was more for May's development. Speaking of, onto my most unpopular opinion of defending Mei. Yes, pushing Damien down the 4 points CI was bad, but it's a total drama universe, they're only yet to injured for a couple of hours at most. This wouldn't have killed him or even warranted a medical evacuation. Also, the way she feels bad about it makes her character interesting, I like the idea she keeps trying to be better or making the same mistakes. While I'm fine with her as early boot this season, Season 2 show more potential for Mei that I didn't think at first. While I personally wouldn't want the first season to just be this cast, if that does happen, Mei will be one of my favourites to win. Bowie was my favourite character last season and he's still good here. While he's in a smaller role, he was still funny and enjoyed the cheating and challenges of Park as a good team conflict. I like the idea of Wayne and Raj being so against cheating. Speaking of, they were quite funny this season but I have a problem with them, mainly how they build up them as a pair that needs to be special eventually but they're only separated for one episode. Sadie and Katie are teased for separate for a couple of episodes. This really made me use Sadie and Katie as a positive example. While I could have liked this more if Raj left earlier, I like Wayne winning. It's a good contrast to the last season's finest being the best players. With this ending being the most genuine player winning. Ignore all the drama, he's just a guy getting to the end somehow without getting a single vote over both seasons after the first episode. I support Wayne's victory, even if it's only going to be like 8th on my character ranking. Anyway, now on to the four most discussed characters of this season. To end on a more positive note, I'll start with Caleb and Freya. This romance wasn't the expected one, but I moved on almost immediately with Damien and Freya. Damien deserves so much better than to be forced in a total drama relationship story. I think this arc has potential Caleb going from wanting a giants to them becoming a couple, but it's total drama. Yeah, season is very limited relationship drama, but this brought it back. While this plot is generic, I was originally defending it to some extent. Freya had enough marriage to merge again, I don't think it's too different to Gwen and Trent and Iron, and people are mostly nostalgia leaning towards that. Also, no matter what, this would still be far better than Callie and Devon and Donkey's race, because that lasted 24 episodes. However, the last bit of the season sunk this shift for me. They went on and off arguing, and both don't seem ready for this. It also didn't help that this was in every episode. I still like Freya even with a yasting side too young, but Kayra is probably my least favourite character in this cast. I don't dislike him, it's more of a testament to these characters' quality. Anyway, on to the best character of the season with Julia and MK. First off, I don't have a problem with their sudden team up since it's in character and immediately fun to watch. They have such an entertaining thing and duo dynamic. This was shipped immediately before we got actual science in the show. They aren't canonically in a relationship yet, but... Julia did a good job playing Vayne again, with some good moves compared to her PA last season. Some of this stuff just happens off screen, but the only one that really bothered me was still on the immunity idol off screen. As for MK, I just really like her ways of cheating the game. She's a different type of villain. I also like how MK was yearning to do well in China about cheating. I saw a comment about the season going downhill to MK yet, and I kind of agree with that. Their dynamics were really fun and the best part of this season. In conclusion, I give this season 7.5 out of 10, and I feel that's too low and too high at the same time. It's a really fun season, but also has its flaws. I echo this season is getting very responsive, because for a long time, poor drama community has felt too agreed on certain things. I would like another season, but probably with another cast first. This will be a long wait even if it doesn't get renewed, but in the meantime, I watch the YouTube series Disventure Camp. It's not very really better than the reboot for having similar points of total drama, and season 2 being very mixed but it is easy to get addicted to in the same way. And they produce the episodes that are shockingly fast quantities in this YouTube produced. Maybe give the watcher your death for more total drama content. If you enjoyed this video, consider press subscribe and watch my other videos. The end.